Hello everybody, I'm in the Littlewood, also known as Martin, and welcome back to Destiny. A slightly different Destiny video today, uh, because this one is actually all dubbed in post. So I did put out a Twitter poll and was like, hey, do you want me to talk about the trip that I went on to play Destiny? Do you want me to just do an intro and then leave the gameplay footage blank afterwards? But you all opted for this, because you all seem to be somewhat interested in the little visit that I had to Bungie Studios, which, by the way, was so, so freaking cool. So to very quickly explain, uh, I was tweeting out that I couldn't say anything about the reason why I was in Seattle. Everyone was like, oh, you're just there for PAX, which, by the way, thank you. I had no idea PAX Prime was on that weekend. But the real truth of it was, was that uh, Activision took me out there. They wanted to take me to Bungie Studios and to put me uh, in a room in a hotel with lots of other YouTubers and MLG people and uh, some other developers as well to fight off against things like this guy, Fogoth the Untamed, for about 12 hours each day. And it was like a 9-10 hour flight. As soon as we landed and got to the hotel, which was probably another hour on top of that, so about... 10, 11 hours journey in probably like by that point, they uh, they went, right, okay, you're going to go to your room and in 20 minutes we'll see you downstairs so you can play some Destiny until 10pm. Granted, this was about 2, 3 in the afternoon, so after 10, 11 hours of flying, they wanted us to actually play Destiny for 7 or 8 hours. And to be fair, it was like, it was nice because they basically just went, here's the map, go nuts, but he these are the things that you really should record because these are really freaking cool. So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you uh, the summoning pits, which is this currently, this is the boss fight from the summoning pits. And then I'm also going to show you the boss fight from Winter's Run, which is one of the Venus Strikes. We did actually play through the Nexus, uh, which is another Venus Strike. But for whatever reason, a lot of our footage, everybody that attended this event, uh, all got corrupted, or at least, uh, you know, significant chunks of it. And that happened to be one of my strikes, unfortunately. So anyway, yeah, so we went to this event. We played on this. Other people that were there were people like More Console. We had Datos there. Uh, some of the guys from Mayanite as well were there, which was pretty cool. And we also had a lot of MLG players. And I was actually sat with them for the most part because on day one we played through campaign stuff and on day two it was all pvp and me being sat with the uh, the mlg guys i spent the day getting an ass whooping which is why you will see no pvp footage from from the trip uh, at all i didn't even bother to film because i knew i was just going to get absolutely whooped the entire time now the following day was going to be a 12 till 12 schedule so it's literally wake up at like 9 we start playing at 10 we do have breaks every so often but we finish playing at 10 p.m uh, and somewhere in the middle of that day I actually got to go to Bungie Studios, which for me was really, really freaking cool because out of all the game studios in the world um, and all of the f game franchises that I've loved over the years, this is one of the only ones where I've ever thought I would really like to see behind the scenes of that, which is why I've always bought the collector's editions of uh, all of the previous Halo games that they made before, obviously, 343 Industries took over. One, because they were edited really well, and two, because they really did give an inside look to it. It wasn't them just talking about concept arts and like ideas that they had and how they implemented them. They literally show you in those behind the scenes, like them actually using the 3D software. They show you, you know, the music being composed with an orchestra or even just doing vo voiceovers in booths and stuff like that. And that kind of level of access I've always absolutely loved. And that's why I wanted to go there. And it was just as cool as you'd expect. So we went through the reception area. We got to see all of the awards. They have cabinets upon cabinets upon cabinets uh, of just different kinds of, uh, of awards. And if you actually want to see some of that, some of the people that I went on the trip with, I will link to their videos in the description and something that I discovered actually is that the game Oni, I don't know if anybody ever played that, it's spelled O-N-I uh, I played that a lot as a kid, really really loved it, it was one of the only PC games that I really got into and it turns out that was Bungie so I was like, oh my god, full circle like they make everything that I enjoy and then they actually took us to the mocap studio so we had a tour from Deej who's the community manager as you might know and he is one of the most amazing people I've ever met, he's just such a ball of energy and he's one of those people who you can find absolutely hilarious, but you never underestimate, if that makes sense. You know, you can have a laugh with him, but as soon as he switches on serious mode, you take him seriously. Such a great character. And he, uh, he showed us the mocap studio. So the mocap studio was probably about the size of... Imagine like a gymnastics tumble floor, if you've ever seen one of those. It was about... I'd say like two-thirds the size of one of those. Uh, we weren't allowed to actually step foot inside of it because obviously it's all very sensitive flooring and equipment and stuff in there. But we got to have a little poke in and that was really, really cool. And then they actually took us into the theatre. You might have seen it in some of the behind the scenes in the past. And the theatre was really cool. They actually used that as a way of observing the people that are QA testing and just general like audience testing. And he was telling those stories about how some of the people that were newer at Bungie would look at somebody playing Destiny and be like, he doesn't look like he's having very much fun because they have 
have a face cam on them as well as the actual gameplay and they can watch both of those things in the cinema next door and they were like no 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 if he's got a serious face like that that means he's having a whale of a time like he is having the time of his life he's in the zone he's absolutely loving it and then after that was when the cameras had to go off and we actually entered in to Bungie Studios and it was just the largest thing I've ever seen in my life like studio wise whether it's a game dev studio a YouTube office anything like that it was huge and it was just so cool so essentially the studio is a multi screen cinema complex and also a bowling alley as well all completely gutted out and filled out as a gaming studio and it's just it's beyond comprehension how huge this thing is and one of the key things that I noticed when we very first walked into the thing and uh, D showed us this as well is that there was this really huge monitor which essentially had like a massive graph on it and the graph is actually something that they watch in the offices when either the servers go live when they release a new area so obviously when raids come out later this month which apparently like six or seven hours long that's gonna be brutal but uh, it's a way of them gauging how many people are online at any any given time and you can actually see the dips and the drops for when like Americans go to bed when Australians wake up and stuff like that so the amount of time that they actually invest in just watching how many people are online and how well the content is going down or you know is there a, a, a weird blackout with the servers and is it something they can fix or is it all on you know PlayStation side and Sony side we, you know it's something they can keep an eye on and just that kind of like level of investment in it which is absolutely crazy and speaking of investment as well they've not put all their eggs in one basket is what they were talking about they've basically created the game and they've put bits and pieces in of everything and depending on which way the community actually takes the game so if it is going to become something that's uh, heavily influenced in the MLG scene they'll focus on that more so over certain other things or if campaign really takes off or if particular PvP modes take off or if people just really like the lore or the raids or the strikes they're basically prepared now for as soon as the game goes out within the first few months they can gauge where the game is going to go and I think that's really really cool a lot of companies will have DLC and stuff set up you know months into the future maybe even for the first year they'll go right this DLC pack is coming out in three months this one at half a year and then we'll do a season pass after you know nine months we can get all three of them for the price of say two or something like that and, uh, and when I move to the left of that monitor there's a rock climbing wall so random there's just literally a rock climbing wall inside of Bungie Studios and down the rampway just beyond it is where they actually have like an in-house gym so this place is basically kitted out so you would never have to leave I don't think they actually have like a sleeping quarters but they totally have the room for one it's so so cool so after that they basically took us upstairs to what was essentially kind of like the cool shot the kind of the cool view of the office uh, where you actually get to look over kind of one of the main bodies of where all the developers and all the coders and programmers and where they all sit it's a shot that you would have seen if you literally google Bungie Studios it's the one you'll see it's the same balcony that I got to stand on and it was just one of those amazing moments where I'd seen it so many times in video and you're finally there in person it was quite surreal and one thing that I noticed and the thing that Deej explained as well was that everybody that works at Bungie can work in whatever style that they want if they want to stand up all day whilst they work they can do that I saw one guy who was stood up and then the guy next to him had a desk of a similar height but he actually decided that he wanted more like a, uh, a cocktail bar sort of like bar stool kind of thing that he wanted to sit on there were people that were completely like sat on the floor some people were working off of bean bags and then like these were saying if you ever need like more monitors or you want your desk high, higher or lower or anything like that then everything is just completely customizable you let somebody know you come in the next day it's all there it's all set up and ready for you to work on which is really really cool and also as well there weren't booths like I was saying earlier on with the QA testing there were separate booths for each person that was playing the game for like you know dev testing but in the actual developers room where people are there coding and stuff it's actually a completely open floor there are no dividers and like they were saying it, it was a way for them to allow uh, a sharing of ideas everybody can see each other everybody can see what the other person is doing and whether they want to chip in with an idea for that person to develop they can do or if somebody's stuck there's always somebody within like an earshot of them or at least four people within earshot of them who are there to either help them with a problem or to you know bounce an idea off and that's the way you know creativity works if you have a group of other creatives usually even just talking about something that you think is perfect you'll find somebody else has just a little extra that they can sprinkle on top of it and then after that that was the end of the tour it was a really brief walk around and I did see a lot more stuff but I think a lot of it I'm not actually allowed to talk about only the things that are shared in this gameplay footage so following that we went back to the hotel played Destiny uh, for the rest of that day and then the following day was PAX and I thought I would still talk about this in the video one because we still got another five or six minutes left on the
on this boss because he's quite a toughie. This guy's called Axor. He's an Arkham Priest. And um, essentially, yeah, there's a lot of these uh, toasters that come out. I genuinely can't even remember the name of them, but I just call them toasters. If you know, it's those little floaty things that I'm talking about. And actually, the boss that is on Nexus, not to ruin it too much for you, but he is actually a triple decker toaster with a huge shield in front of him. And he is arguably the toughest strike boss uh, that I've come across so far. I don't have footage of that, but just take my word for it. And I'm sure within like two days, it's going to be on YouTube. People are going to level so quick. Because both of these raids that we're doing currently, by the way, are level 6 just FYI. So let's talk about PAX Prime then. So it's a convention that has always been on my list. I've sort of been ticking conventions off over the last year or two because given my job, it's actually a lot easier for me to attend them and get like press passes and stuff like that. And uh, and this one was interesting. So it wasn't as big as I was expecting. I think all the pictures that I've ever seen of PAX must be from PAX East because a lot of people told me that convention is absolutely massive. So I'm going to list off a few of them uh, that I've attended and give you an idea like numerically like 1.5 or 2 or half and stuff like that as to how big it is. So let's say uh, the first and second Minecon, so the main hall and the main stage in Paris, is about two of those. Eurogamer, it's about two Eurogamer size. Um, I would say Gadget Show Live is one and a half, and any Insomnia, it's probably about two and a half of one of those. That seems to balance out about right. So I was actually there for just a single day. I say a single day, for a few hours, that's all I was there for. And in exchange for my pass, I basically agreed to do some stuff with Polaris. So first thing I got there, got my pass from Neil, director Neil, you might have seen him in Dodgers vlog looking all grumpy and stuff, or you might have noticed him from a Strippin's game show as well. But, uh, but yeah, so basically I went there to meet up with Strippin, and basically me and him and Dodger uh, walked the entire show floor. We had a single walk around just to get an idea of where certain booths were, because later on that afternoon when we were going to film stuff, we'd need to know where our appointments were. Uh, in the end, I only ended up having one appointment. I ended up having one with Matt Danovic and Dodger, and we played some Borderlands, which was quite cool. Not going to detract from Destiny with Borderlands, but it was nice to play is Claptrap and the uh, the low gravity was actually a nice element to add into the game as well. But anyway, after we did that, we went straight back to the hotel where the Polaris part was and I think there was a signing session going on there and there was a panel and stuff like that. And as soon as that finished, we went off some food at the Cheesecake Factory after saying hello to uh, to a couple of viewers, which was quite nice. And uh, one of the viewers happened to be in uh, the Cheesecake Factory as well and bought us a round of drinks. So if that was you, you're awesome. Thank you very much. And then from there, we went straight over to the Twitch party, which was probably one of like the bigger highlights of the trip I'd say the bungee trip and like the bungee studio tour and the twitch party were both up there neck and neck uh, because it was just lovely because apparently in the past the twitch parties have always been quite loud EDM music bit elaborate more of like a club vibe whereas this was like hey we're gonna get this really cool bowling alley it's got some pool tables it's got some nice open bars you can get some food if you want to and everyone can hang out get drunk and chat away because that's what these conventions are for a lot of people and for myself as well I don't get to see people like I am spoon and Wes Wilson and things Things like that very often maybe once twice a year so actually being in an environment where we can't we can get a bit you know smashed but also have a really good time as well and just chat away uh, was just absolutely perfect it was just like the cherry on the cake of the entire trip bowling wise I did okay so in my lane we had Finn's graphics stripping Dodger uh, Finn's brother Skylar we had uh, cinnamon toast Ken we had Mary we had Joel incredible orb and we also had Luis and Samin from uh, Polaris as well and by chance we happened to bump into and he came over to our lane just to hang out of us for a while the guys from smosh games but no following that party i basically stumbled home and then the next day i got a flight home to the uk which was again another like eight nine hour flight and the entire way there and back by the way uh, for at least three quarters of the flight i played nothing other than my playstation vita which i'm in love with uh, and i played the sword art online hollow fragments game so if, if you're looking for a game recommendation i love that game but only buy it if you love the show if you don't love the show you're going to hate the game it's not going to make any sense to you and you won't be quite as forgiving as I have been of it but uh but that's it that was the trip those are the two boss fights that I've got one from the moon one from Venus and over the next couple of days on Twitch TV I'm going to be streaming Destiny pretty much non-stop or at least during like you know working hours and then maybe a splash in the evening as well so if you want to come along and do that and hang out with me that'd be cool chances are I'm going to form a firefight team either with people that I know if not we'll probably get some viewers just in a random party and we'll go shoot some aliens and it'll be a good time I basically my goal is to get to level I think it's 20... I think it's level 26, which is quite a tall order, by the 16th of September, so a singular week 
to get up like 20 levels is quite a lot to do but that's when the first raid comes out and the raid is apparently hours upon hours long i'm talking like six seven hours from what i've heard is how long the raids are going to be so that is going to be quite interesting if you would like to see content on that i think the best way that would work is if i were to live stream it and then put it out as videos afterwards like i did with the little and cube stuff if not if there are checkpoints in the game then i will totally play through it in like you know energetic sums and upload that as content i think uh, myself strip in the alley a we're initially going to do some stuff in the alpha so maybe we can get together and do the raid together who knows it's all exciting but anyway thank you very much again to uh henry from activision and the bungee guys for being so accommodating and bringing me out to the trip and thank you to all of you for watching this video and generally supporting me these are the kinds of opportunities that i wouldn't have unless i had an audience and had a community that was so passionate about everything that i do and everything that i like you know invest in they also invest in as well so it's really really cool it's a circle of love it's a love bubble and hopefully it never bursts so have a good day everybody and I'll see you all inside of Destiny. Bye-bye. Today, we celebrate.